I'm Logan Crawford, and right now on Spotlight, we're uncovering life's lessons in resilience and virtue with the thought-provoking novel, Reluctant Hero by Lawrence Bosch. In this fictionalized account, the author explores the journey of growing up in America, navigating challenges in athletics, police training, and more, all while confronting the moral complexities of life. If you're drawn to stories that balance strength and vulnerability, this is a book and a conversation that is for you. We're delighted to have this very talented author join us here today on Spotlight. We thank the team at Atticus Publishing for helping us put him in the spotlight today. And we ask viewers like you to support authors like him by subscribing to our channel and by purchasing his amazing book. The links are below this interview. Lawrence, great to see you here today on Spotlight. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for the invitation. It's very nice of you. Oh, it's my pleasure. Loved your book. Um, is this your own story, fictionalized? Tell us a little bit about the inspiration and the background of the book. Okay. Um, about 80% of it is actually um, episodes that I encountered through the years. Uh, obviously, there are some sections of it that deal with the spiritual realm that couldn't possibly be real. Uh, there, That was the fictionalized part. Um, one of the reasons I wanted to put these uh, things down is uh, I was afraid that the lessons I learned might uh, not be passed on to another generation. So I targeted an, an audience of high school uh, males, primarily, that I thought would be able to read this uh, because it's interesting to them to see what kind of lessons I learned and how they might apply to their own experiences. Let's go through some of those lessons. What do you think the most important one, ones are? Well, it's important for uh, kids to understand that you uh, can innovate without being uh, wrong. Uh, there's a lot of uh, conflict in the book between right and wrong in different areas. But uh, in terms of their own uh, adaptation to circumstances, Sometimes if you step out in the wrong direction, you shouldn't blame yourself. You shouldn't beat yourself up. You should carry on and learn the lesson from that. So that was one of the main motivations for writing the book. Yeah. And every time you step out of your comfort zone, and even if you get beaten back into it, I think you're learning stuff. I mean, every failure puts you on a path to success, don't you think? Yeah. I actually wrote a paper like that in uh, college and I emphasized the uh, difference between what you uh, set out as a goal and what you achieve and if you constantly are focusing on the um, amount by which you failed then you're kind of missing the point uh, you're human and you're learning and you're uh, trying to do what you can but you can't uh, always blame yourself for being a little bit short of your, what you'd like to have as a desired uh, end point. Exactly. Well said. Let me ask you this. How does your background in philosophy influence the themes that you write about in your book? <laughs> well, I went outside of my program in uh, a Catholic university. I during the summer, I would read books, and one of them that uh, appealed to me was uh, by Nietzsche. It's called Beyond Good and Evil, and it's just a lot, lot of um, aphorisms that are like uh, cliches or principles. And um, at, by the time you finish the rather lengthy book, you you realize you're not uh, you don't have any better sense of what's right or wrong as than you did before. Hmm. The the other thing that uh, came up was uh, during the pandemic, I read uh, the book by uh, Italian author Ital uh, Boccaccio. It's called The Decameron. And oddly enough, it's a series of stories that are told by nobility as they're in a retreat during the uh, plague back in the Middle Ages. They had gone there to get away from the populace and hopefully avoid getting contaminated by the plague. So I was reading that, and it provided a suggestion for the framework I could use. Because each day, uh, a different noble person was supposed to come up with a, her or his own story. 
Mm. But it, the framework it provided an idea for me on how I could fit together some of these rather short incidents uh, into one novel that have some kind of uh, congruity. Well, wonderful work on that. It's funny, I think as you're talking, I think our educational backgrounds are similar. You went to Catholic University. I went to Fordham University. And I think the emphasis on, you know, thinking philosophically uh, is... Uh, emphasized at both institutions, which I think obviously helps you later in life. Let's switch now to sports and athletics. I never played football. I'm too skinny. I would have broken in two. But I watch some football, and I feel almost every life lesson can be learned or taught by watching or participating in football. Tell us how your experiences in collegiate athletics shaped your story. Well, interesting enough, uh, there's a quote by John Kennedy that he said the second most uh, maturing experience that kids can have besides um, war itself is uh, playing football. Now, I didn't play football in high school. I was too small and I played basketball instead. But when our school was low on recruits for the football team, I stepped on thinking I could play in the defensive secondary because all you do is run around and break up passes and things like that. And, and, but the problem is that role morphed into other kinds of positions I had to play. And uh, that was because the team needed it. We had um, injuries and, and other people quit. So uh, to get to your point, um, there's, uh, again, the focus on feeling free to innovate. There was one time in the story where I was actually bounced up in the air by receivers because I had made an interception near the goal line, but uh, they were trying to break me apart from the ball. I had I was hit so high that I was able to wrap my uh, shins uh, backwards over the crossbar and swing myself up. <laughs> and mm. that way I evaded any further hitting. And uh, so, and innovating, uh, it was important to me to emphasize the use of the left hand. So many times you see a quarterback running around and you see that the perfect position for him to use is to throw it with his left, mm. but they always back up and try to throw it with their right and it gets dangerous. So again, innovation, feel free to use your left hand whenever you want. Um, but uh, another lesson in there is that sometimes people get carried away. And, uh, there were times when we got into fist fights in a game, and I don't know why the ref didn't have a better control of it, but uh, fist fights can be a, a dangerous when you're uh, only weighing 129 pounds. And, but... Uh, Thankfully, I had some uh, training in self-defense, so I was able to prevent too much injury to myself. Unfortunately, I wound up uh, injuring other players. Uh, so the innovation can be taken too far. The, the guilt can be uh, emphasized too much. And sometimes you just have to uh, hope that things will work out in the long run. Absolutely. Let's talk a little bit about the theme of good versus evil and how it plays a role in your narrative. Yeah. Well, uh, I used the idea of having actually been uh, beaten up by uh, some of these players years later when they tracked me down through Google and uh, actually passing into the afterlife and then I'm confronted with what happens to my soul. And I was almost immediately thrown out of heaven and just realized I wasn't a good candidate for that. And then I'm face to face with Satan about whether I go to purgatory or the other place. So there's this uh, analysis of how some of the things that I did in my life outside football might have been either good or bad. And I have to admit there's a lot in there that, that's not exactly going to help me open the key to the uh, the uh, place I might want to go. So uh, drawing the line between uh, what satisfies you and your own personal uh, wants and what is best for society 
is a, a key to uh, determining what's good and bad uh, in without having to rely on uh, simple rules like the various commandments or uh, even some of the laws. Yeah. It's important work you've done here. I think that the readers will get a lot out of it. And you mentioned that your target reader is basically a uh, high school age male. And yeah. why you think, uh, go ahead. Nowadays, uh, when females are playing game, uh, sports like uh, uh, certainly volleyball, but uh, um, flag football, for example, some of the more contact sports, uh, I think they can benefit from these stories too because uh, everybody knows what it's like to overachieve and have your uh, test, your uh, adrenaline take over uh, and forget about your discipline. So uh, regardless of what gender it reads the uh, book, I think it's useful to know that discipline is more than just a word about how you get yourself strong. It's also a, a word about how you use your strength. Absolutely. Absolutely. I do feel this book is of great and vital importance to high schoolers. But also, I think other people will find it interesting as well, and they can reflect upon their own high school days. They can reflect upon what's happening into society now. It's certainly an imaginative and inventive story about growing up in America. The name of the book is Reluctant Hero. It is a fictionalized account of the author's own life. And in the pages of this book, the author explores the journey of growing up in America, navigating challenges in athletics police training, and more, all while confronting the moral complexities of life. Lawrence, thank you so much for joining me here today on Spotlight. Thank you. I appreciate it, and I enjoyed it a lot. I enjoyed having you on the show. I appreciate your time, your wisdom, and your insight. And to the folks at home, I'm Logan Crawford, thanking you for your time this time. Until next time, on Spotlight. <laughs>